What are you resource management committee meeting to order? Um, and we do have a quorum. Thank you all for attending. And um, we'll, we'll start with our uh, agenda order and its approval of the October uh, 19th meeting. Motion. 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 Moved and seconded. Any discussion or comments, additions or corrections? Hearing none on the vote. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? That carries. Public comment on the agenda? <laughs> but we do have a presentation. And the presentation, as per the agenda, conservation initiatives and funding gaps. How the American Rescue Plan, ARPA, ARPA, may help. Okay, and our presenter tonight is Stephen Schwartz of the Delaware, Delaware Island Conservancy, or for the Delaware Island Conservancy. On behalf. On behalf of. So I'm going to say, going to turn the floor over to Steve, and uh, we're going to learn something tonight. So thank you for being here, Steve. Fire away. Thanks, Andy. So. Um, on the Zoom is Caitlin Hubbard from the Delaware Highlands Conservancy. Um, and uh, we'll do this together. The, uh, I'll do the presentation and then we'll have a few minutes for questions. And there's a lot of, there are a lot of words on the slides. Um, I won't really uh, go through all the words. I'll just try to get some of the concepts out there. And we can share the slide deck with you um, so we can read that. Um, so, uh, back earlier this year, the Congress passed and was signed into the uh, American Rescue Plan Act that provided funding to help, uh, help states, counties, and municipalities all recover from the impacts of the pandemic. And it's a lot of money. Um, every state, every township, every municipality received funding, and uh, pretty much on a per capita basis, about $200 per resident of counties and about $100 per resident of townships. So um, you know, depending on how many people live in the township, they, they have all received or have been allocated anywhere from 50 to hundreds of thousands of dollars. And all of the counties that we've talked to, uh, Delaware and Sullivan, Pike and Wayne have all received around $10 million or more. So this is a win. This is funding that came uh, through congressional appropriations. And it's, in a lot of ways, it's not really categorical. Funding. So very often, uh, uh, governments apply for funding for flood relief or for uh, food assistance or for other things through programs. This is money that came down with very few restrictions. So Delaware Highlands Conservancy asked me to take a look at it. And, uh, and with the help of the Pennsylvania Land Trust Association, we've done most of the analysis on this. Uh, we thought that it was interesting and a good opportunity to, for local governments to explore using the funding to meet some conservation uh, initiatives. And we know that there's always funding gaps, and we know that there are a number of projects out there that have been sitting around waiting for funding to come along that is flexible enough to use because it's not categorical funding. So uh, the Conservancy is a private nonprofit land trust. It's uh, protected 18,000 acres. It works in our region. Uh, and uh, and for those of you who haven't heard, um, the uh, Conservancy recently was the beneficiary of a request of a old farm over in Beach Lake called the Van Scott Nature Preserve. It is now open to the public and uh, as it comes up to speed, um, it will be the site of all kinds of programming and will, will be a real asset for the community and, uh, and uh, Delaware Highlands has moved offices there. Um, the, uh, and I highly encourage you to go and visit. Um, uh, 
uh, these, this is the region that we serve and uh, every project that we do is the result of a collaboration with multiple partners. So on the left, uh, we kind of represent 18,000 acres. Um, uh, in the left, in terms of the actual properties, and then on the right, um, we have, um, thank you, we have uh, uh, created this map where we kind of symbolize the size of the properties. And as you can see in Pike County, uh, there are a lot of big projects because uh, a lot of these projects are uh, working with landowners who are hunting and fishing clubs who own thousands of acres. Um, as you get further north, there are a few projects in Delaware County, that's even one of them. Susquehanna County. Um, and it's not that there are fewer projects in Wayne and Sullivan, but the projects tend to be a little bit smaller. Um, so from Delaware Highlands point of view, um, there, there's funding for every project sometimes, but it's not always enough. It's not, it may not be available at the right time. It may require other, uh, uh, other requirements like matches or other things that don't make, make it necessarily usable. So uh, acquisition of land for public access is one of those things that um, uh, is one of those things that we, uh, we try to encourage most of our projects with, uh, with uh, private landowners do not include public access, but um, sometimes they do. And, and a number of projects have come to us over the years where a public agency is interested in acquiring some land to, to, uh, to provide more public access to the river, to hiking, to other, other property that has high conservation value. So conservation of land to protect scenic habitat, environmental or natural values, you know, some, you know, a bog or, or spring-fed headwater stream or other things that we think have high uh, environmental values are always uh, high on our list, but not the, the, the funding is not always available. And uh, preservation of farmland, um, we have, uh, we've been approached by a number of farms that would love to donate conservation easements or sell conservation easements because they want the farmland to stay in farming forever you know, to meet the needs of future generations just as previous generations have used it. And as you know, farming is very difficult. And, uh, and uh, in this day and age, it's very difficult to make ends meet. So sometimes um, we can help create kind of an endowment for the farms by acquiring an easement from them to meet their objectives and then they get some funding for it and uh, helps them keep the farm going. So uh, preservation of farmland is high on our list, but the funding that's available is very categorical and very difficult to use. We have two projects in, uh, in uh, Sullivan County that haven't gone forward because even though there was some money available, we weren't able to use it in, in the right way to make the project work. Can I ask a question on this? Acquisition of land for public access. Once the land is acquired, then uh, what if there is no suitable access? What about development of access? So that's that it wouldn't be a Delaware Highlands um, role, but that is something that this money can be used for. Okay. Thank you. So here are a couple of examples that we pulled out of our archives of uh, uh, projects that came to us and we weren't able to complete. And the first is uh, uh, a landowner really wanted to see his property go to a public agency for, uh, for public use and uh, there simply wasn't the money to acquire the property. Uh, uh, the, the second one is, uh, where, where uh, there, there's a planned trail, there's, it's a good trailhead site or, or river access site. And uh, again, uh, with multiple partners, we can usually find some of the funding, but not all of them. And so um, 
know, there was a project from Delaware County that um, a landowner had granted an easement to Delaware Highlands um, for the property, but they wanted to, landowner and, and municipalities kind of wanted to create a public trail through that to connect two towns. And, uh, and there were some financial obstacles to that. So this money could uh, potentially be used in, in that case. Uh, scenic and historic preservation. Uh, you have a view shed uh, and you want to protect a property that could be developed that would impact the view shed. This would be a good use of funding. Uh, Agland, again, and, uh, and I'll just, you know, additional fees. So, what does the ARPA uh, statute say? ARPA doesn't talk specifically about public access or recreation or conservation, but it does talk about, uh, and it does encourage specific investments in these areas. Everything in yellow comes straight out of the act. It was looking for governments to invest in public health, in tourism, economic recovery, and in water and stormwater infrastructure. Uh, and uh, in our analysis, trails, parks, and open space are crucial to our economic recovery. Uh, they are infrastructure. We think of infrastructure as sewers or, or bridges or roads or whatever, but trails and parks are infrastructure too. Um, we all saw last year and this year how, how highly used, how intensively used every public open space was um, because people just wanted to get out. And then this was a public open space was a great opportunity for people to get out safely and, uh, and change their venue and, uh, and enjoy, you know, nature. And uh, so, you know, if that isn't a public health response, I don't know what it is. And, uh, and uh, in, in here and in many places in the country and around the world, uh, places that have great conservation and open space are destinations and, and help build the tourism economy. So uh, we think that ARPA funding can be used for the types of things we're talking about. And it could be used for planning, it could be used for design and construction, and uh, it could be used for transaction costs, acquisition costs, it could even be used for bridge finance. If there is other funding available, but it takes too long to get that funding in place, we believe that ARPA funding could be used um, to front the money. And, 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 no, we pay when the other money came through. So thank you. Uh, we don't have any ask for this. We don't have a project that we're asking for funding, but we are talking to every county and we're talking to as many municipalities as we can to suggest that if you have projects out there that you've been wondering how to do, uh, there was a project in Pike County, which is on the Delaware. It's called the Santos property. They acquired the land um, 15 years ago or something. They took a master plan for 10 years ago. They never did anything with it because the critical path for that was to create legal public, legal public right away and access to the property. This money could be used for that. And once they do that, then they can look to other places for, they can look to ARPA, but they can also look to other places uh, to find the development money, the program money to make it happen. So that's one of the good uh, projects that's come out of our, uh, our advocacy for this. One thing that we have learned from at least one of the counties is because this money basically came out of the blue, it needs to be allocated by 24, it needs to be spent by 26. Um, but, you know, they're still working through the regulations and requirements and all the fine prints of it. People are all very confused about what the money is and what can be used for. And at least one of the counties has approached the municipalities within the county to say, let's work together. If you have a project, well, first off, the county has hired an auditor to like, kind of oversee the expenditures and uh, they ask, they've offered to the uh, municipalities if you want to also retain the same auditor, it would be cheap and uh, everybody. But they've also said, you know, if you have projects 
we can put some money in, we can put some money in, let's collaborate and, and uh, you know, prioritize how we use this money to work together to do it. So we're, we're encouraging counties and municipalities and municipalities to work together to, um, to be creative to use this funding. And uh, uh, one, you know, one thing that occurred to me when it first came down was, you know, every, every government, every local government has many needs. And, uh, and, uh, you know, it would be easy to uh, use this money to buy road equipment or to pave roads or do things like that. But now that there's an infrastructure bill out there, I believe there's going to be more money to do that kind of stuff. And so this money still is the most flexible to do creative things. And again, I'm urging everybody to think about it and use it in a way that would be helpful. Um, Kaylin, do you have anything to add? Uh, nope, I don't have anything to add. I would say, you know, you're welcome to reach out to myself or anyone else on this um, last slide here. If you have any questions about projects, um, we're always open to, to hearing ideas. So feel free to reach out. Unfortunately, we Fortunately, we don't own it anymore. We, oh. That was a case where uh, government asked us to step in, do what I call pre-acquisition. So to pre-acquire the property and hold it until their funding came through and then they bought it to us out. So DEC owns that. Yes. But this could be a place where ARPA money if the state or the municipality want to use it, they could participate. Right. <laughs> See ya. Thanks, Steve. Yeah, okay. I mean, in Sullivan County, we've encouraged them to use it to, to further build up the OMW Trail. We've just got a big grant to, to do a lot of work and planning for the OMW Trail and the Anderson Watershed. Um, we've encouraged them to think about using carbon money for that as well. Um, so, could this uh, <clears throat> money potentially go towards development on the Calico Riverside Park? Yeah. Did you say 2026 was the deadline for, is that to allocate it or to spend it? 24 to allocate, 26 to spend it. Okay. And I believe this hit everybody's bank account in June, at least half of it. So it's sitting. It's not like they have to request it. It's sitting. They just have to feel justified. They have to feel like they have a rationale to justify expenditure, but the money's there. Would you Can they earn interest on it? Probably <laughs> Can you clarify that? Where is the money so In municipalities and counties. Like 13 to 15 pounds? Or Every municipality in the country. Does the conservancy in the four counties that are represented, do they cover the entire county or is it like our area where we have our jagged line across the river valley? Does it include all the acreage or just a portion of it? Okay, Lynn, do you want to? Yeah, no, our service area covers the entirety of Pike and Wayne counties in Pennsylvania and Delaware and Sullivan counties in New York. And we, we know we occasionally do cross those lines as well. You know, if there's a property on a neighboring county right over the line, um, we, we would be open to looking at that as well. Um, our, our service area is mostly designed so that we, you know, can access all of our easement properties within a few hours maximum. Are you dealing with the political end of it or the planning end of it? No, like it the commissioners and Sullivan County legislature and supervisors and so Have you heard of any uh, good ideas they have for use of this or some of the things you're advocating? Yeah, for? Santos 
It was a great one. Saw them. We talked about the trail. That where we talked about the trail, and uh, and Wayne we talked about the trail. Mm -hmm. Well, it's a great service that the Conservancy is doing to help out these counties because it's almost overwhelming when somebody basically offers you a blank check like this, <laughs> and I'm sure the ideas are swirling in everybody's heads, and yet you want to spend it appropriately and on something with some long-term benefits to it. So that's a great role that DHC is fulfilling in this. Thank you. Yeah. We'll get it in our minutes and disperse it as we do. Okay, good. <laughs> All right, thank you, Sue. Thank you for yes, the thank presentation. You, thank, you. All right. thank you, everybody. I'll hang around a little bit just to see. It's, it's, it's a little overwhelming to figure out, you know, their ideas, and I got to figure out where do I, where do we start for, for example, uh, an access on the Lack Watch and River, you know, for the county commissioners. Does it there? What do we discuss? What? Yes. And, uh, what? And you know, for me, it was actually really valuable to take the Delaware Highlands to the counties because, other than Pike, where uh, there is a relationship between the conservancy and the Pike and the state's bondage, Delaware Highlands is used in a number of projects. And, uh, uh, you know, by and large, all of their transactions are. Either federally or privately funded, and uh, between them and private members. So they don't really deal with the counties too much, county governments too much. And this was a good opportunity to, to share with the, with, the, with, the, with the county governments. The, I mean, you know, pipe dream stuff, uh, Delaware Highlands would love, you know, now that there's a, a river trail in progress uh, developed from. Homestead of Black Relax. Delaware yeah. Highlands would love to see some discussion starting about building a trail along the 650 Booth Corridor from the Black Relax into the Delaware. Because they have another property in the middle that they would love to operate trails part of it. Who has a Delaware Highlands? Beach Lake. Beach Lake. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. but you know they're not going to spearhead that project. So we'll get that idea. But that's what it's all about: it's coming up with good ideas, and approaching the counties and municipalities. And and like I'm thinking of Heather Jackson and the sport program that she's trying to get accomplished with the access of variable. Between cost overrides and uh, no bidders and things like that, um, they end up being having to be built with local money. This sounds like local money that might be available. So, I guess I'll pursue that with Heather. I heard you the only proviso is that. Uh, if you want, want to bring in other federal money, she has a federal grant, right? Federal grants require, uh, that grant requires a one-to-one -one match. This is also probably would be interpreted as federal money, so it wouldn't qualify. Is that access that everybody talked about, or the highlight access? The, no, the one that's under... Under the bridge? Yeah, yeah. the one... No, highlight. No, highlight. Highlight. The one that she's just trying to below Cedar Rapids. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. yeah. Put that out to bid again next year. I thought it was being bid again this this year. Um, they bid. did put it out for bid, and they this November. Oh, oh, again in November. Okay. Yeah. They did earlier in the summer. Yes. They were trying to get it uh, going late summer, and uh, they got very few bids, and they were way over. Heather appeared here though. A month or two ago, he said it was going to be out 
when we redid this November. But I mean, for next year's construction, the Calcun project, and a good piece of that. I hear the hear rumblings that the uh, tourist line along the uh, New York side from Hancock to Port Jervis has got some life go for that. The train? The train. Well, that's always a tough one because of the insurance pro prohibitive expenditure to do any sort of passenger service and the mm -hmm. gauge is not the right you know, measurement it, for anything but freight traffic. This isn't going to make So it right is a now. dream. It's definitely out there. But if there were facilities required to make that work, you know, station in every town? Yeah. There's no further discussion. We'll move on with the agenda. 